Welcome back to Killing Floor, everybody. Today we are going to be going over the strongest builds that I could think of for each of the classes. And there's going to be a couple builds for a few of the different classes. So we're going to have free builds and we're going to also have DLC builds as well as a couple different builds if a class can do one job or multiple jobs particularly well. Let's begin this with starting out with Berserker. Berserker we actually have four builds for. Uh, two that require DLC weapons and two that do not. So our very first loadout is going to be the Frostfang with the Medic Bat. The Medic Bat will be a reoccurring weapon on all of these because the Medic Bat is probably the best secondary weapon to have with Berserker. It makes us a fantastic melee weapon as well as it makes for a fantastic support weapon. Even though the healing has been nerfed several times now, it doesn't really matter. The weight is just so convenient to have for this. The AoE is still really good. And even if this could only heal a small amount, it's still healing for some amount. So it's still really good for crowds. And it's also really good for teammates. Now with the Frostfang, Frostfang is probably your best range option as Berserker or one of your best ranged options. It lets you have pretty high damage at distance. You can freeze enemies with it. The shotgun is pretty strong. The axe blade on it works as a backup tool. You can also block and parry with this. So it is just very solid. This loadout is extremely cheap too. It doesn't cost very much, which is fantastic. Or another option, if you wanted a free version of this and you still wanted to have a ranged weapon, I'd recommend the Medic Bat and the Nail Gun. Nail Gun is also a really strong weapon. It deals pretty good damage, pretty good burst damage, clears up small and medium enemies pretty fast, works well against flesh pounds. So just use it on the shotgun mode for anything at range and then just use the Medic Bat up close. This is an even cheaper loadout because the Nail Gun only costs like 750, the Medic Bat's like 1200. You don't even need to throw upgrades into these if you don't want to. You could, or you could buy something like a medic pistol to go along with this just so that you could heal teammates. And then you could just give all the rest of your cash to everybody else every round after you buy like your armor or your nails, I guess. It's going to be super cheap to refill this and you're going to be full build within like half the time that anybody else is getting close to their full build. We do have uh, two other options here though. If you wanted to do a full tank or full melee berserker, which would be taking the medic bat as your secondary weapon and then taking the ion thruster. This is a DLC weapon as well. Let's you have really high damage. Let's you have good reach. It's special attack is really strong. It's probably just berserker's best melee weapon for actually fighting in melee combat. Uh, another option for this would be the Medic Bat plus the Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher is probably the best defensive option that Berserker has because it can block and parry a lot of different things, although it does substantially less damage and less DPS than something like the Ion Thruster, but it is free. So you have better tankiness, more survivability with this one, but less damage, less DPS over time. Can be really good in a team setting, especially if you're playing on a map like Prison where you can just sit there and face tank through a bunch of stuff and body block. With Berserker out of the way, let's move to Commando. Commando, I have two loadouts, one for multiplayer and one for solo. In multiplayer, I would highly recommend that you take the 401 Assault Rifle for Commando. This one is really useful for teams. It does good damage, it has good sights, it has good magazine size, it reloads fairly quick. It doesn't do tons of DPS or anything like that, but it can heal and it does enough to clear up small and medium things. The main thing Commando is kind of tasked to do. And then we have the FAL as our secondary weapon. FAL is an extremely strong weapon. It's probably Commando's strongest assault rifle. Lets you have good DPS and lets you clear up things like strikes and flesh pounds a little bit faster than you otherwise would. Use the FAL for picking off things at a distance thanks to its scope. And for picking off big things, switch to the AR for clearing off small things and healing them. Really, really consistent. If you're playing solo commando though, I'd recommend the FAL as your primary weapon, just doing the same type of thing, clearing up stuff, and then either take the AK-102 or take the uh, M16. Both of these options are really good. AK will let you have a little bit more damage per shot and damage per second thanks to the burst fire. M16 though is super accurate, really easy to control, and it also has the M203 grenade launcher, which is better for crowds. So either one of those is a really good option as your secondary option. Then we move on to support. Support, you can actually build however you'd like. Support has a lot of weight, so you can carry around lots of guns. And the majority of support's guns are really strong. These are just two builds that I came up with. The first one is running the AA-12 as our primary weapon. Does really high DPS, has a large mag size, is pretty accurate. Uh, you can run through ammo with it pretty quick, but that's okay. It does really well on boss wave too. Then we have the Frost Fang as a secondary weapon. This is DLC, but you can block and parry with it. You can freeze things with it. That's super, super useful. Uh, if you run completely out of shots, you can still use the axe to kill things. And if you do freeze things, you can get more damage with the axe anyway. And then also pairing this with something like the Buckshot. You could also take a Medic Pistol with this. Buckshot just makes it so we have extra damage and something we can grab early on. And we can just use it for clearing up small and medium enemies. Then switch to our other guns once there's bigger enemies out. This build does really well against everything. And once you have all these, you have a ton of bullets. So clearing up basically any size of crowd should be fairly easy for you. 
it will take you a decent amount of time to get to this. And then for a second and a free loadout, since the Frostfang is not free, I decided to go with the M4 as our primary weapon. M4 is really solid, does good damage, has good reach, is really good with upgrades, reloads fairly fast, all around really solid. Secondary weapon is going to be the Boomstick. Boomstick is also really strong. It's something you can get super cheap, super early on. Gives you some more mobility with firing both barrels as you jump. That's pretty useful. You can also climb over things thanks to that, and it just does really high damage, and it scales well with upgrades. And then we have the Medic Shotgun as our third gun. This one is just really good for basically everything. It has long range. It does good damage, good DPS. Not as high as some of the other shotguns, but it can also heal, so that gets you a, a couple more points there. But support in general can kind of just go with whatever three shotguns or two shotguns with upgrades that they really want. And they'll be doing just fine because the shotguns in this game are very strong at basically every sort of range. Next class is Medic. And for Medic, I have another multiplayer and a solo setup. For multiplayer, I would highly recommend the Hemo Goblin and the Heal Thrower. Even though the Heal Thrower has been nerfed, mostly just its damage has been nerfed, which is fine. The Heal Thrower didn't really excel at damage anyway. You can still clear up small and medium enemies with it fairly fast, so if you got crawlers or stalkers or whatever, you can kill them really quick. Mostly it's really good because it's two healing weapons in one. You can heal allies with it super easy. You can apply buffs super easy. That's where its big strength is going to lie. Just use this for healing everybody else on your team. And then switch over to the Hemo Goblin as your kind of primary range weapon because this debuffs enemies once they are stabbed with the syringes so they get weaker as well as this one does have better healing darts than I think any of the other medic weapons with a few exceptions like the Incision. So you can heal better with this as well as you can slow things down with it. It's really strong on boss wave and it makes for a really good supporting uh, overall role for this. It's also very cheap. Both these weapons don't cost very much, which is nice. And then in solo, I would still recommend taking the Hemo Goblin as a primary weapon. It's still very good in solo. You can weaken Scrakes, Flesh Bounds, Husks, bosses with this so they, they don't do as much damage to you. That's really nice. As well as it deals damage over time, which is also pretty good. And then taking the Medic Shotgun as your secondary, although the Medic AR would also be a good choice here. Medic Shotgun is just very consistent. Gets you good damage, gets you good long range, gets you good burst damage. Just all around really solid for a medic weapon. Of course, you could go with other weapons too, like the incision. Then we move on to demo, which I've only picked one build for demo, which is a free build. And it's a very, very strong free build. That is going with the RPG and the Kaboom Stick. RPG is extremely strong. It deals really high damage to anything. You can one-shot strikes and flesh pounds with this. You do massive damage to bosses with it. And you're probably just going to want to save this for really big enemies like the flesh pounds and scrakes. And then a secondary weapon, we're going to be taking the Kaboom Stick. The Kaboom Stick is absolutely crazy. It's so strong. It's so strong on any class. It deals really high damage at close range. It also gives you good mobility and you can't blow yourself up with it, which is extremely strong. Just run around with the Kaboom Stick clearing up anything that's at close to medium range and then use the RPG at anything that's long range or big targets to take out really quick. You don't really need any other build than this. It's just super solid. Then for Firebug, we have uh, two builds, one for a DLC build and one for a free build. For the DLC build, we're going to be using the Helios Rifle as our primary weapon. Helios Rifle is really strong. It's probably the strongest microwave gun in the game. It deals really high damage, has really long range, has a large magazine size. It's all around just fantastic for Firebug, clears up robots really well. It's really good for that. And then for a secondary weapon, we're going to be taking the Thermite Bore. This is a Seal Squeal, but it lights things on fire. So it's even stronger than the Seal Squeal because you get more DPS over time. Shoot out a bunch of the spears towards any enemy that is kind of small or groups of enemies, and you'll clear them up super easily. And then just use the Helios Rifle to take out big things like Scrakes, Flesh Pounds, and to deal with the boss. Both are really good for boss wave. If you don't have that and you want a free version of this, I would still recommend taking the Helios Rifle as your primary weapon because it is just really, really strong, even though it does cost a decent amount, so you're not going to get it right away. But still, really strong against big enemies and against small enemies and kind of against everything. And then either taking the HRG Incinerary Rifle. This is the Fire M16. This gets you pretty good damage. Works basically the same as the regular M16. So still very accurate, still a high rate of fire, still decent damage. And the Fire Grenade on it is really good for crowds. Or if you don't like that, you could also take the Dragon's Breath. This is a very cheap shotgun that's very strong. It deals really well with everything in the game for Firebug. It, it's also only a tier two, so you can get it almost immediately with this. Deals good damage, has decent range, clears up small enemies, clears up big enemies. Its only downside is that it kind of has a slow reload, but that's okay because you can hold a lot of shots with this. And a lot of the time you have plenty of time to reload with 
firebug anyway because you could throw a molotov at your feet and then just reload it while you're there. For gunslinger we have four builds. Each of these uh, takes use of the medic pistol though because it is just such a useful option with gunslinger. You can still use rack em up with it, still does good damage, and it just works well against everything. So that one's going to be appearing on all of these. Our first build is going to be the Deagles, plus either the 500s or the Piranha Pistols with the Medic Pistol. Deagles are just a really strong option. They do high DPS. They clear through things really, really quick, and they're just probably your best DPS option if you can consistently keep hitting headshots. Then either the 500s or the Piranha Pistols. Piranha Pistols let you block and parry, although they're less ammo efficient than the 500s but they do really well against bosses, so that's a good option. 500s do really well against everything. They can also pierce, and they're free, so that gets them a little bit of an advantage there. And then the Medic Pistol, like we said, is just really good at clearing up everything. Another option for this, and a DLC option, would be the Deagles plus the Glocks and the Medic Pistol. The Glocks are really good. They're basically just submachine guns. They clear through small and medium things really fast. They do really high damage towards big things as long as you're hitting them in the head and you have rack them up. Another option would be taking the Deagles plus the 2011s and the Medic Pistol. The 2011s are also a really good option. They also have really high DPS similar to the Glocks. They actually have a little bit more because of their higher bullet damage per shot, but Glocks can be a little bit more consistent, a little bit less uh, unforgiving. And then for kind of a different setup for this would be one Glock plus the center fire plus a medic pistol. You can throw upgrades into this. The center fire is very strong for gunslinger. You do really high damage with it and it's very accurate out to very long range. So that's really good. One Glock is also extremely controllable and basically just a submachine gun. Well, more accurate and easier to control submachine gun than the Glock, uh, than the dual Glocks are. Just spray this at small enemies and you should be doing fine. And then use the medic pistol for clearing up smaller things or for healing allies or for both. It's really good for that. Then we move on to sharpshooter where I have three builds for sharpshooter. The very first one is the free build, which is running the center fire plus the railgun. Center fire is really strong. It deals well against basically everything. You can clear up big and small and medium zeds with it. It is very consistent. Even if you wanted to throw upgrades into it and use it as like your primary big zed weapon, it's pretty good for that. We're not going to for this one. We're going to be using the railgun for that. And we're just going to switch to the railgun to clear up really big things. Scrakes, flesh pounds, hitting bosses really hard. That's going to be what that one's for or for picking off enemies at very long range. Make sure not to use the lock-on because the lock-on lowers your damage. Just use the regular shot with it and it's very strong. Center fire uh, will take care of everything else. You can take care of small and medium enemies just with body shots with it, which is pretty nice. Another free option that's also pretty strong, you can go with the M14 and either the FAL or the center fire. That is... Decent as well. FAL plus M14 gets you a lot of ammo and you can clear up small and medium enemies pretty quick. You can clear up big Zeds kind of fast. This build isn't particularly great for like boss wave, so I would recommend switching something out. But if you're taking the center fire, that can still work on boss wave. FAL and the M14 both work very similar to one another. M14 is semi-auto only, but it works well at close to medium range and with rack em up, it's pretty decent. And then FAL, once again, rack em up really helps with it, but this one can be switched to full auto, but it costs more and it weighs more. You can take both of these if you'd like. And then for the third build I recommend for Sharpshooter, it's going with the HV Storm and the M14. This one, you're going to use the M14 for just clearing up small and medium enemies the same way that you usually do. And then the HV Storm is also good for clearing them up. This one's kind of like an alternative to something like the FAL. It weighs the same, it costs the same. It does more damage per shot, but you have less shots overall and you can't go full auto with it. It also has the electricity, which is kind of fun to arc to different enemies. Then we move on to SWAT, where we have three builds for SWAT. All of these take advantage of the HRG nail gun. The HRG nail gun is really strong, gets you high DPS with its regular fire. With its shotgun fire, it gets you absolutely crazy amounts of DPS. It also is really strong against flesh pounds. It's just not super strong against scrakes. That's about the one thing that the nail gun isn't super strong against, but it will still kill them fairly fast. Our first build is taking that plus the G36C. This is a DLC weapon that has armor breaking on it. It's the assault rifle that does really well at any sort of range. Clears up the armored enemies really fast. Clears up the big enemies really fast. And the sights on it do make it very easy to use at long range. It also has a laser sight on it like the M14. So close range is a pretty good option too. The second build is taking advantage of the nail gun plus the bastion. The bastion is just the stoner, but it has a shield on it and you get more shots thanks to SWAT's passive. So just use this for clearing off any sort of small and medium enemies and even against large enemies, it's decent because you can block their hits with the shield. So it's really good against flesh pounds and scrakes and a lot of the bosses make SWAT even tankier. And then our last build is running the Chris plus the nail gun plus the medic submachine gun. You can throw medic submachine guns on any of these builds if you would like to and you're not going with upgrades. Medic submachine gun is a really good option because it doesn't weigh very much. You can heal with it and it clears up small enemies relatively fast. That's all it really needs to do to be a pretty good option as a third weapon for SWAT just in case you're running low on bullets or you just want to use this to clear up all the small enemies before switching to your main guns to clear up the medium and bigger Zeds. 
Then we use the Chris as a weapon that can take out a lot of medium and big Zeds as well as small Zeds very quick. This has a really high rate of fire. It holds a lot of shots, at least once you're fully leveled up with SWAT. Good damage per second and very controllable recoil. This build is also completely free, which is awesome. Same goes with the Bastion. The G36 is the only DLC that we have here. But all three of these builds are pretty solid for SWAT, and you shouldn't be running out of ammo anytime quick. And then finally, we have Survivalist, which I would recommend two builds, although Survivalist is super flexible, and you can build them multiple different ways. The main builds that I'd recommend are going with the Kaboom Stick and the Arc Generator. Kaboom Stick does massive damage at close range. It clears up everything super easily. It's not very expensive. It's just crazy strong. I don't think that one really needs to be explained too much. The Arc Gen is really strong, and it's a weapon you don't see too often, but it's really good with its electric balls. It actually does double damage towards all bosses, which is really nice, and it does really high damage towards all enemies. It's really strong in very long-range maps or very enclosed maps that have a lot of corridors. You can just fire an electric ball down there, and you'll clear up so much stuff and deal so much damage. It also kind of has the EMP status effect on it as well, so you can stop robots from doing their abilities or other Zeds from doing theirs. That's all really nice. And then you can use the Kaboom Stick for anything up close and personal and just deal massive damage with it. The second build I'd recommend is going with the HRG Locust, which did get nerfed in the last patch, but it's still extremely strong against crowds, just not as strong against big single targets like Scrakes and Flesh Pounds, which before it was pretty crazy because it was super cheap and did well against everything. Now it's super cheap and still does really well against everything, just not as well as it used to. <laughs> and then the secondary we're going to be taking is the RPG. The Locust you just want to use for crowds. It clears up small things really fast deals with big enemies decently well and can poison enemies and bleed enemies, which is great. And then you're going to use the RPG for taking out anything big. RPG just knocks out big enemies super fast. You can kill flesh pounds, quarter pounds, strikes super quick with it. And you can also deal high chunks of damage to bosses. But again, survivalists can kind of be built in a lot of different ways. There are some other really good weapons like the Centerfire or the FAL that also work really well with them, as well as just other strong weapons like the M4 or the Double Barrel. Basically, if there's a weapon that's strong for another class, unless it's Firebug, it will probably be really strong on Survivalist as well, just because Firebug weapons kind of just work for Firebug most of the time. So hopefully this kind of helped you out. Tell me your strongest builds down below in Killing Floor for each of the classes. I'd love to hear them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye!